now in the previous lecture we have discussed about interaction of waves of finite amplitude where waves are of the same family and we have seen that for shock interactions of same family the shocks pass through however while passing through they bend and if the two shocks are of different strength then a slipstream is originated at the point of intersection and on the two sides of the slipstream the flow properties are different except the pressure and flow direction the pressure and flow direction are same but all other flow properties velocity temperature density they are all different the entropy is also different on the two sides so this slipstream actually differentiate between two different flow region having different flow properties and entropy since the tangential velocity are different on the two sides of this streamline or this slipstream this slipstream can be thought of as a line with discontinuity in tangential velocity or almost like a vortex strait vortex line next we will consider interaction of shocks or finite waves of same family interaction of shocks of same family that is where two shocks are inter interacting and both of them are of same family that is both of them are either left running or right running. So, this sort of situation we have already encountered when we discussed about compression by turning through successive corners. We have already mentioned that if we have two successive corners let us say two corners with different amount of turn. So, the flow turns here through a shock is this and becomes parallel to this part of the flow this part of the wall again it turns through another shock and become parallel to this part of the downstream part of the wall. Now, if the upstream Mach number is m 1 then after the first shock the Mach number decreases and <coughs> these two shocks have different wave angle and usually they converge. So, at certain distance they will <coughs> they will meet. Now, in this case the shocks being of the same family they do not pass through they cannot pass through rather they coalesce to form a single stronger shock the coalesce to form a single stronger shock. So, the coalesce to form a single stronger shock. They march together. Now, see this if we consider two particular streamline one let us call this intersection point to be O and we consider two streamlines one below this intersection point that is passing through two shocks and another streamline 
that is passing through this single shock. <coughs> now, these two streamlines or all streamlines which are on one side of this intersection point and the other set which are on the other side of the streamline, they will experience different entropy changes. And consequently, there will be difference in the entropy of the flow which is passing through this part of the shock and which is passing through these two shocks and a slip stream will be formed, a slip stream will be formed. where the entropy on the two sides are different as well as the velocity, density and temperature. However, this pressure on the two sides must be equal and often it is necessary that another shock sorry another wave of course, much weaker will come back. a weak reflection <coughs> and <coughs> this weak reflection is necessitated to make the pressure on the two side equal to make the pressure on the two sides of the slip stream equal. Now, this reflection can be either a compression or an expansion depending on the particular configuration of these shock and Mach number. Anyway, whether it is a shock or expansion, it is much weaker than these primary waves or primary shocks. Usually, if this second shock is much weaker than the first one, then this is a compression wave. However, if their strength are comparable, this might be an expansion wave as well. So, we can say that this part of the second shock is merging with the first shock and a small part is reflected back towards the wall. <coughs> so, this is what usually happens when two shocks of same family interact that is they usually merge to form a single stronger shock. However, a small part of it can reflect back as a much weaker wave which can be either compression or expansion depending on the relative strength of these two interacting shocks. <coughs> and these slip stream develops at the point of intersection which separates the flow into two, diff two different regions having different entropy and <coughs> different density temperature and flow velocity. And since this slipstream represent a jump in tangential velocity, this is essentially a vortex line. Now, when there are a number of shocks of same family and they coalesce together as as it happens when there are when there is a smooth turn or number of turns <coughs> then there are many such reflected waves even these reflected waves when it hits the wall again can reflect and consequently there is a series of reflection wave and reflected wave and their interaction and 
there are large number of slip stream from each of these intersection points making this entire region full of vorticity or flow field is becomes rotational and also a constant continuously varying entropy field. Let us now consider when a shock interacts with an expansion fan. When a shock interacts with an expansion fan of the same family that is both are moving in the same direction let us say let us say a shock develops from here. Now, you know at this corner as the flow turns in this corner as the flow turns in through this corner there will be an expansion fan, there will be an expansion fan. there will be an expansion fan and both the waves that is the shock wave and the expansion waves are of the same family and they will interact. What happens in this case is that the shock is attenuated or the shock strength decreases at each case and since the shock strength decreases here it have a different shock wave angle and it will move like this further interaction with this it will again experience a reduction in strength or attenuation and it will further bend and we will have a bend shock. <coughs> now, in each case there is usually associated a weak reflection and However, in each of these cases you can see that the flow which is crossing this shock is <coughs> having some change in entropy and subsequently some of these reflections they can also be compression type where there will be a marginal change in entropy. Consequently, there will be a multiple shock slip stream here and we will have a whole region of vorticity downstream of this interaction. <coughs> so, we discussed mainly two type of shock interaction that is interaction of shocks of same family and the other is interaction of waves of different family which we discussed last class. Interaction of same family which we discussed today we have seen mostly that in case of shock these two shocks they coalesce together 
with a weak reflection which can either be compression and compression or expansion and there will usually be a slip stream from the point of interaction. In case of a interaction between shock and expansion fan of same family, the shock experiences an attenuation of its strength at each interaction and consequently the shock becomes a carved shock at each interaction it bends because of its strength reduced and we have a carved shock due to this interaction and at each point of interaction there will be usually an weak reflection and in many cases particularly if the interactions are weak these reflections can be neglected. However, when the interaction is quite strong these reflections cannot be neglected and there will be a multiple slip line and downstream there will be a whole region of vorticity or an entropy field. Now, we will consider some other cases of interest. One such is that in case of a viscous flow or flow near a wall, what happened to the shock? Let us say that we have a solid wall and a shock is coming and incident. Now, we know that near the wall there will be usually a boundary layer and flow velocity will continuously decrease towards the wall and at the wall there will the flow velocity being 0. Now, within the boundary layer there will be a small region of the flow where the flow is subsonic and the, let us say the part of the, the flow is such that the part of the boundary layer is supersonic and consequently the shock will be able to penetrate that supersonic part and will not be able to hit the wall where it is <coughs> subsonic or where the flow velocity is 0 and also little above it where the flow is subsonic. However, since the flow Mach number upstream of the shock is continuously changing or decreasing in the subsonic part, in the supersonic part within the boundary layer, the shock strength or shock wave angle will also continuously increase and it will behave almost like a normal shock and the configuration will be something like this that is of course, it is shown here as touching the wall, but in actual, in reality it will not reach the wall, but little above the wall until the region where the flow is subsonic, supersonic and within that boundary layer there will be a small stem which is almost like a normal shock. <coughs> and in this region this will be the slip stream slip stream and <coughs> below that slip stream there is a continuous region of continuous region of rotational flow or flow with vorticity and this whole region is of rotational and having entropy field. This part where m 2 is greater than 1 and in this part m 2 is less than 1. Whole region of vorticity field or 
entropy field. So, this special type of shock reflection, this is a special type of shock reflection. and usually this is known as mark reflection. <coughs> so, you see this mark reflection is characterized by three, three shocks, the incident shock, the reflected shock and there is a small leg of normal shock called the mark stem. So, it is characterized by three shocks an incident oblique shock reflected oblique shock. and normal shock leg called mark stem. However, there are many such many other situations where much more complex shock reflection and shock interaction takes place. However, we will not go into that. <coughs> we will now consider another flow situation where the wedge angle is greater than the theta max for the particular Mach number. We have already seen that for a given Mach number m 1 there is a maximum possible value of theta max that is for every m 1 for every m 1 there is a corresponding theta max. Now, what happen if theta what happens if theta is greater than theta max. Let us consider a wedge. Let us consider a wedge and in this case say this theta is greater than theta max corresponding to m 1. Now, how will the flow behave then? In this case, since we know that through an attached oblique shock, the flow can flow at Mach number m 1 can turn maximum amount by theta max and to become parallel with the wall, but in this case this theta is greater than theta max. So, with an attached oblique shock the flow cannot achieve this amount of turn to become parallel as it must be to satisfy the boundary condition. Consequently, what need to happen that the flow here in this region has to be subsonic that is flow near the nose region of the wedge has to be subsonic where subsonic flow of course, can turn by any angle. 
and that means the shock will no longer be attached to this wedge, but rather we will have a detached shock and this flow will negotiate this turn by a curved Let's say by a carb shock. Commonly called as bow shock. Bow shock. <laughs> At the Now, the shape of this curve shock as well as the distance from this point to this point will of course, depends on the geometry of the body and the upstream Mach number. On the central streamline, <coughs> on the central streamline that is on this, the shock is a normal shock and it does not turn, but it becomes subsonic as we move away from this central shock line, the shock strength or wave angle gradually decreases from pi by 2 to smaller values, meaning that in this part of the shock, the shock angle is very close to pi by 2 resulting in the strong shock solution and downstream flow being subsonic. So, up to certain distance the shock is strong shock and the downstream flow is subsonic. However, beyond that the flow is. <coughs> so, this part is 1 while this part is and what in essence we see that the shock satisfy the entire branch of solution. The complete shock solutions is available here. As we move further, the wave angle decreases and shock finally reaches to that or the angle asymptotically reaches to the Mach angle or the weak post or zero strength shock. Thus, the condition that we obtain along the detached shock wave contain the whole range of oblique shock solution for the given Mach number. And in such a configuration, the shock inclination corresponding to strong solution is found as well as the weak solution is found. <coughs> now, in this part, where the flow is subsonic, we know this shock is no longer independent of the downstream conditions. A change in geometry, that is, a change in pressure in the subsonic portion affects the entire flow up to the shock, and the shock will try to adjust itself to the new condition. This is what happens for a wedge with theta greater than theta max corresponding to m 1. Now, for a blunt nosed body, <coughs> where for a blunt nosed body that theta is greater than theta max corresponding to any Mach number and consequently for a blunt nosed body the shock is detached at all Mach numbers. for a blunt nosed body if we have a blunt nosed body the 
detached sock at all Mach number. Let us say consider hemisphere cylinder type of body we have a detached sock at all Mach number So, we see that if we use a conventional airfoil that are used for low speed or transonic speed aircrafts, which have a conventional curved leading edge for a smooth flow, we will be always associated with a detached oblique shock in front of it when they fly at supersonic speed. We will now consider once more that the flow phenomena qualitatively on a wave with after body. So, on a wave with after body, what type of events that happens? When M1 is sufficiently high, when M1 is sufficiently high, M1 sufficiently high, high, so that theta less than theta max corresponding to m 1. We have attached shock at the nose, attached shock at the nose and the straight portion is independent of the shoulder and after body. And the flow on the straight portion is independent of the shoulder and after body. Now, the shock angle increases as m 1 decreases, shock angle increases as m 1 decreases. So, at a certain reduced Mach number, the flow after the shock becomes subsonic. So, as m 1 reduced, at a shock at nose and we can see that uh, straight portion is straight portion is independent independent of 
shoulder and upper body. Now, M 1 reduced. M 1 reduced <coughs> M 1 reduced and reduced to a value where theta greater than theta max m 1. Then we have seen already that there will be a detached curved shock and the flow after the shock then we have detached curved shock. subsonic flow over some region behind the shock Now, see while reducing this m 1 from the first value to this second value, obviously we will come to a situation where m 1 is such that the shock has become curved, but still attached. Hmm. And the flow at intermediate at an intermediate at an intermediate m 1 at an intermediate m 1 shock is still attached, but curved. with subsonic flow downstream. Then in that situation the shoulder will affect the Shock. This is this is between the reason it happens. when the region is between m 2 equal to 1 and theta equal to theta max lines in the theta beta m curve. That is, if we <coughs> 
if we remember that if we recall the theta beta m curve if we recall the theta beta m curve which we have earlier drawn If you remember that So, if the solution or the theta lies in between these region that is little less than theta max, but very close to it in that region it happens that the shock is still attached to the nose, but it is curved and downstream flow that is flow over the straight portion of the waves here straight portion of the waves here is subsonic a part of it is still subsonic <coughs> that is we have And this particular Mach number as we at which this first happens can be thought of as a critical Mach number <coughs> for this particular case. Now, at at m 1 corresponding to theta equal to theta max corresponding to theta equal to theta max the shock wave starts to detach. shock starts to detach. And this particular M 1 is then called the detachment Mach number. Detachment Mach number. <coughs> and at as m 1 decreased further the detached shock move upstream of the nodes. And the separation distance of the shock from the is called 
detachment distance or shock of distance. This distance is called detachment detachment distance or length or also called shock of length length or distance. <laughs> so, what we see that in case of a wedge with upper body let us say for a given wedge angle particularly when the Mach number is considerably high. So, that the wedge angle is less than the theta max value corresponding to that Mach number. We have an attached oblique shock at the nose and the straight portion flow over the straight portion is independent of the shoulder and the body. Now, as we decrease the upstream Mach number that is m 1 the shock angle continuously decreases and at a certain reduced Mach number where the flow after the shock becomes subsonic and the shoulder flow over the shoulder now affects the whole shock consequently and the shock may be curved, but still remaining attached this is we have shown in theta beta m curve the reason where this can happen that is in the region where the wave angle is just marginally less than <coughs> maximum value of theta theta max and the region lies between m m 2 equal to 1 and theta equal to theta max this situation can happen. Further reduction in Mach number corresponding to theta max the shock wave starts to detach this is called the detachment Mach number and when Mach number is further decreased the detached shock moves upstream of the nose the particular shock of distance will depend on the geometry as well as the Mach number and once again since the there is a considerable subsi subsonic region behind the shock or over the straight portion of the over the shoulder of the body the that completely affects the upstream solution and <coughs> the flow is no longer or the shock is no longer independent of downstream conditions. For a blunt nosed body we have seen that at, a, at any Mach number at any upstream Mach number the flow turning required is larger than the theta max and a supersonic turning through an oblique shock is not possible and the flow is always flow becomes always super subsonic ahead of the blunt nose and a detached oblique curved shock always stands ahead of the blunt nose. That is for detached shock we will have for a blunt nose body we will have detached shock at all Mach numbers. <laughs> These very simple analysis of isentropic waves and their interactions can help us to analyze many practical two dimensional supersonic flow problems particularly for all those geometries which have straight line segments. Of course, when the Mach number is considerably high and the flow turning required are not large and the flow never becomes subsonic because you see that the step, step by step construction of flow is possible only for a supersonic flow alone 
if there is a subsonic region you cannot use that because that subsonic flow is influenced by the entire boundary or all boundary conditions the whole flow field is interconnected so these piecewise construction of supersonic flow can be used to find certain solution of some practical problems of course for two dimensional and for geometries with straight segments in aerodynamics we are quite concerned with airfoils and wings and we know that a flat plate is a very good approximation of aircraft wings and the flat plate is a straight geom straight geometry so we can analyze the flow over a flat plate using these simple theories that we have discussed about for shock and expansion similarly in supersonic flow a diamond shaped airfoil or <coughs> is very widely used and <coughs> which is also made up of straight line segment and once again we can analyze that flow both qualitatively and quantitatively similarly we can also try for any other geometry suitable for supersonic application and particularly if the geometry is having straight line segment the analysis will be quite straightforward and simple and we will now try to construct some of the solutions and derive very important and useful results. However, we will do that in our next lecture. That. Thanks.